Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 22nd meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board, and I'd like to ask the other members of the board to please introduce themselves, starting with Steve. Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Ken Lau. And this evening, we also have joining us um, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker. Thank you and the um, assistant director, Sarah Suarez. So thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you all joining us this evening. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the review of the meeting minutes from December 18th, 2023. Are there any additions or corrections, starting with Ken? Is this one that's in this one here, 18? Yes, the 10 page one. Yep, December 18th. Yep, I do have one. And I had it and I moved it. Uh, sorry about this. Should have left it there. No worries. <coughs> Do you want to come back? Yeah. Please. Okay, great. Uh, Shana, any uh, additions or corrections? I had none. Jean? I have none. Steve? Nothing here. I have one. I'll give you another couple minutes. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> so on page nine, um, the last sentence of the second paragraph, uh, where it talks about... Um, uh, where it, where it talks about what the board and the building inspector had had approved. Mm -hmm. I only mentioned the board uh, because I did not comment on the um, approval. We don't have knowledge of the building inspector. So if you could cross that out, that would be great. That's all I have. The one I had was about having them bring something back for our approval, not for our response, not to explain our responsibility. Is that also related to um, the same project, 882 Mass Ave? Yes, and I can't seem to find that. I had it there a minute ago. Uh, uh, is that also at the top of page 9? Is it this paragraph here? The last sentence? Nope. Okay. Um, you also mentioned uh, right there. Yes. Uh, you would like to... Uh, I, I would like the board to come back to, uh, at the next board meeting to explain what uh, the developers going to do, not to explain our responsibility or our requirements. Okay. So flip it, I so guess. So the, the developer, developer could explain their response to um, achieving compliance with the board's decision with the special permit conditions. Right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't think we want to explain our, our requirements, so we already did. Okay. That's all I had. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other additions or corrections? Is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes have been approved for December 18th, 2023. All right, we'll now move to agenda item number two, citizen warrant articles, and I will turn it over to Claire uh, to introduce anyone we have joining us this evening. Sure, great. <clears throat> Thank you. So tonight we have two citizen um, petition articles um, looking for feedback from the board before the close of the warrant later this week. Um, we'll start with, um, well, let's see, we can start with Three Family Everywhere uh, by J.P. Lewick and Annie LaCourt, and then we'll move on to um, Andy Greenspan's article about uh, rear yard setbacks in the business districts. Um, so, great. If you'd like to, to uh, present your article, that would be great. I, I, this is my first time here. So do okay, I wonderful. Uh, so, well, seated, yeah, if what I could ask you to do is just to come up to the um, to the front 
uh, here so that we have a fighting chance of the microphone picking up your voice. You don't. You, yeah. you could just sit. That's totally okay. fine. Yep. Um, and then uh, I'll get a, a thumbs up from you once he starts speaking as to whether or not we're able to pick you up. And if you could just please each state your um, name and address for the record, and um, we'd love to to hear your thoughts on um, your proposed Warren article. Thank you. Um, so John Paul McGee, 104 Bay State Road in Precinct 2. Annie Lacourt, 48 Chatham Street, Precinct 13. Great. So, yep, so you, you're more than welcome to um, have the floor. If you, you know, you can have up to five minutes or so. If you need more than that, just let us know um, to explain. Um, it looks like you have a presentation to, to take us through. We do. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, um, during the MBTA community's process last year, um, there was a great deal of discussion about the best ways for bringing more multifamily housing to Arlington. Um, one of the suggestions that didn't make it into the final proposal, but that uh, I thought was uh, quite interesting and should be considered, is to look at making um, three-family dwellings by right uh, an option that's more available throughout the town. Um, so we're, there is a little bit of uncertainty. Uh, we're, we're in touch with town council about uh, whether um, allowing both two and three family dwellings would qualify for the like 50% voting threshold um, language. Um, so uh, yeah, kind of, we'll be in touch with them. So okay. it, could, it, it could be two and three family dwellings by right throughout Arlington, or it might be just three family dwellings. Um, so in terms of how we're, yeah, so, our goals for this um, are to address the regional and local housing shortage that I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. Um, and, but also in doing this, uh, doing so to uh, kind of not disrupt the neighborhood character, uh, to do that by keeping existing dimensional requirements in place. Uh, so you no know, change in setbacks, uh, height limits, Floor, uh, floor limits. Um, so essentially, the buildings of the same size that are currently permitted uh, could be constructed, um, but just with more dwelling units within them. Um, so we have our planned Warren Art language here. Um, I think Annie had reached out yeah, to Town I Council about that as well. I, think I reached out to Town Council. I have not got a final determination mm -hmm. back from him have a lot of signatures on trust at the moment, um, but I will be sure that the language is adequate for us to have a broad scope and a good discussion before I finalize it and take it into um, the selected office. Sorry, I know I'm not talking loud enough. No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> right. um. But yeah, so this is what we have so far. Um, so in terms of specific bylaw changes, um, uh, we'd be amending uh, a few things with the R0, R1, and R2 districts. Um, so again, the second bullet point, uh, a little bit up in the air, depending on what we hear back from town council. Uh, we will certainly be um, adding three family dwellings as a uh, yes, uh, in the, the table in 5.4.3, um, depending on what we hear back, it also might be the case that we'd be adding uh, yes for two family dwelling slash duplex for R0 and R1, uh, but more to come on that. Um, yeah, actually, if you just back up a little bit more. Um, so yeah, th th there are also a few points there where um, when you look at the definition of the districts in five point. Uh, 4.1.a, it's like, oh, it's the single family residential district or the large lot single family. And it, it doesn't really make sense to kind of, if we're changing this fashion, it, it didn't feel like it made sense to kind of keep it with the no longer applicable definition. So we'd just be changing that to like uh, remove the single family or two family uh, aspects from it. Yeah, 
same for 5.4.2.8. Those few things in the table that um, <coughs> would be kind of similar to just it. Um, we don't have a full draft of the changes yet. Uh, again, we're waiting on the town council for the, the two versus three question. Uh, yeah, I should there. People just had a good mind. Uh, but yeah, we did actually have, we did also have a few things that we value your feedback on very much. Um, I mean, part, uh, a large part of it is that we want to leave the zoning bylaw kind of been a good place after all of this uh, to kind of not have uh, corner cases or unforeseen situations that would be that would apply. So definitely, if you think of anything or you see any, anything, uh, we we'd love to hear it. Um, there were a few places that we weren't really sure uh, exactly the best way to handle it yet. Um, so the first point, um, it felt a little silly that you to kind of have the in the R3 district have that remain with a special permit when we're allowing by right um, in R0 through R2. Um, I, I could see a case though that I mean since. They have different dimensional requirements. Um, that there, there's definitely a case for keeping the special permit process um, in that in those situations. They've got three floors. They've got smaller setbacks. Um, so yeah, we're kind of we're over the boat. I mean, also I think there are probably very few R3 lots that aren't currently three family uh, for that matter. So um, open to kind of any thoughts or feedback on that. Um, and then also how to handle existing accessory dwelling units. <coughs> um, it's my understanding that those are only permissible in uh, R0 through R2 right now, that uh, R3 doesn't qualify. Um, <coughs> and I mean, I, I can certainly see a case. You, you don't want a situation where someone, <coughs> they, they, like you have to like a, they go and they build an uh, ADU right now, and then they're back here in six months or a year to um, convert to a <laughs> um, But on the other hand, if you've got someone who current who built an ADU five years ago or ten years ago, um, so yeah, we're kind of um, curious about what you yeah how you think that should be best handled. Um, and just anywhere else in the, the zoning bylaw that seems uh, important to change or important to keep consistent with this. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, let's go ahead and, um, Annie, did you have anything that you would like to add no, to I this? I think we covered it. Okay. Um, you know, just got to keep up my reputation as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> All right, um, let's go ahead and start with uh, Steve for discussion um, and question, questions from the members of the board. Okay, so just a, a couple of things to clarify. Um, so you're, when you say not changing the dimensional regulations, so R0 would still have a 9,000 square foot lot size and R1 would have a 6,000 square feet, and, you're keep, and you would plan to keep the two and a half story height limit? We would. Okay. And, um, so regarding your open questions, um, regard, as far as R3 goes, the warrant language doesn't mention it. No. Um, so I don't think, I, I think you would need different language to do that. Okay. Now R3 through seven comprises a very small land area, a very small part of land area. It would be nice to make it consistent, but you know, R3 is basically where triple deckers existed in the 70s, that mm -hmm. became R3. Um, and as far as ADUs go, ADUs are allowed in all business and industrial, business and residential districts right. in conjunction with a single or two family dwelling. So I think the only, you know, sort of corner case that you might run into there is um, if someone had a two family dwelling and converted, say, a garage to an, a detached ADU. Um, so ADUs aren't permitted in conjunction with a three family dwelling. Um, they'd kind of be stuck in that configuration. They wouldn't be able to go to a three family without de uh, discontinuing the ADUs, yeah. ADU. But um, otherwise, if it were 
you know, some there would otherwise I don't see any points that, of potential interference. If someone had a two family and wanted to, it's it's another option. You know, they could opt for a three family, or they could do a two family with an ADU, depending yes. on what made the most sense for their mm -hmm. infrastructure. Um, I mean, <coughs> does it sound like we need to disturb that? Right. I don't think so. Anything else, Steve? That's all I have for now. All right, Gene. Um, yeah, just a couple of additional points in addition to what Steve um, had to say. I think the last time through town meeting, we said no single or two-family homes in the business districts. So at the beginning, you said this was everywhere in town. Later on, you're saying it's just the R1, R0, and R2, so which one? Which ones are you proposing? I think, I think everywhere was a, a literary flourish. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah. the uh, technical bylaw would be R1, R2, R0, R1, and R2, because we weren't thinking of changing the business districts for, um, uh, and we weren't, when I looked at the other residential districts, it didn't kind of make sense to me to make big changes to those. So, like it didn't make sense to me for places where we already have big multifamily development and it's allowed to then suddenly add three family as part of that when it's allowed already yeah so why make the change um, you know I, mean, I think that's a good point though that i mean if, if you have a uh, single or, or two family allowed in those business districts um I, it definitely would have been a good case to include those as well um i'm I guess, I think oh, yeah. Three families are allowed in the business district. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. With, yeah. with a special permit. Gotcha. Yeah. So probably so keep in the existing special permit situation that yeah. Steve was talking about. Before. So, so I spoke with one of my constituents about <laughs> this. It mm -hmm. just happened to come up after I saw what you were proposing, who had some concerns mm -hmm. about it, but said um, the biggest concern was they'd look like two and three family homes and not like the single family homes in the neighborhood. And that was their biggest concern. And I think um, considering that we're requiring site plan review um, in the MBTA districts, I would have a hard time um, agreeing to these without site plan review to give us an opportunity to say that doesn't fit in, you know, you can build a three, but not one that looks like a three family home in the same family neighborhood. If you go through my neighborhood, there are, there are a couple twos that sort of stand out, but there are also a lot of twos that could be single family homes if you didn't, if you didn't understand that they were two family homes. So I'd be interested in thinking about site plan review for these. Also, because we are um, doing site plan review in the whole, the whole MBTA community district anyhow, where people can build three family homes um, in the neighborhood or more for site plan review. So I'd like you to think about whether it makes sense to do site plan review as opposed to no review. To me, it would make sense to include the R3 district and site plan review and get rid of the special permit just so there's consistency with those. Um, so can I ask a question? So what are, what are the bureaucratic steps that a builder would what? have to jump through for a site plan review? We're, we're going to be talking about a potential of that later this evening. Stay tuned. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean. So, so just think about, a good, I think, the, the short answer, as I see it, is the big difference is they're as of right, but they need to at least go through the board to make sure the board's comfortable with what they're doing, to make sure the board that they're meeting all the zoning requirements, and that we can look at things like landscaping and where the cars are and things of that nature. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would so say. Just, just think about that as an option. Um, the other thing, I, and I don't know what to do about this personally, we just 
got MBTA communities passed, and I think as you correctly noted, one idea was let's do this everywhere, mm -hmm. but that's not the idea that got adopted by the committee, mm -hmm. and that's not the idea that we approved, and that's not the idea that town meeting approved. Mm -hmm. So I just weather, wonder whether this is too soon, uh, not giving MBTA communities at least a couple of years, if not more, to see how that plays out. And then if we're not getting any buildings, I think you have a much better case to make that this would be an important next step. So I just like, that's one of my big hesitancies about um, doing this. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. Any special? Just the other one is getting an idea about if this were to go into place over the next five years, what could we expect in terms of changes? We had that come up in MBTA communities, and Steve did some work to try to figure out a potential answer. I think we would have to get an idea about how big a change or how small a change is this, if this were to go so in place. So some kind of projection of how much turnover? Right, all of the R0, R1, and R2, because I mean, I see right now, you know, buildings in my neighborhood <coughs> getting bought, torn down, and larger ones getting built in their place. I don't have any idea whether, if this were to be in place, they would be two or three family rather than one family, or whether more would get turned over, torn down. I think it would be really helpful to know that in terms of deciding what we would want to do about it. Yeah. All very good points. I mean, I think we're definitely open to site plan review. We'll, we'll be thinking about it. I mean, it seems like a very good balance of the trade off between kind of having an extensive process that takes a really long time, but the site plan review, the predictability that the. Uh, yeah. you know. And I think, you know, we have um, guidance for single and two family mm -hmm. homes now. Yeah. I think we would need to figure out whether we could extend that to three family homes so that there's at least some guidance about you know the the door should face the street and not the backyard things of that nature so I did one I think question we're thinking um, about that too just in order uh, do you think the existing warrant article language would be extensive enough to allow us to add site plan review to it um, cuz that's just amending definitions, expanding uses. Um, Good question to ask the town council. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> it's pretty generic. I mean, it doesn't even really say my right. Mm -hmm. Like, so it doesn't exclude talking about site plan. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd ask the town council. All right, thank yeah. you. Great. Gina. Um, so, so I, also would be really interested to hear uh, an analysis of potential um, potential development and um, anticipated or suspected development capacity here. I suspect, my, uh, my supposition is that rather than new development, rather than teardowns, more likely to see conversions of two-family homes into three-family homes or one-family homes into three-family homes and um, in instances such as those I wonder what does what does that mean for site plan review um, and um, you know do you get site plan review if, if you uh, do you have the opportunity for site plan review if you are not changing the envelope of the building? Um, another question that arises uh, is parking. Um, if you're not changing the envelope of the building but increasing the number of units, you know, um, alluded to the MBTA communities process, and one of the concerns that um, came up frequently was uh, was actual the actual or appearance of parking in the front yard and front yard setbacks and uh, driveways that were so wide that it looked like um, uh, so so some thought about uh, the 
the ability to park on site um, would also be, I think, useful. Um, we initially plan just keep it with the existing one space per unit and the existing, I think there's like a 20 foot wide driveway at the start up to a certain depth. Um, so we're planning to, to keep it at that, um, mm -hmm. but I'm very comfortable with that and in terms of, yeah, maybe it's like, if you're gonna have to change the parking for it, maybe yeah. that's a good site plan review opportunity. Mm -hmm. or Um, I echo the same comments as some of my board members have stated already. <coughs> I just want to take on a different aspect of it. And you're saying simply you want to make it by right so we can get three families in the same uh, shape as a single family in, in, a, in, yep. in, a, in the same lot size. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you're advocating for smaller units then because you're fitting three units in a would unit would be a single family so it'd be much smaller living and have you guys done any studies on that you know I'm not asking you to draw the whole thing up but you have an understanding <coughs> Thank you. You. where let's say you had a single family house that was at 12,000 square feet in this 5,000 square foot lot size, <coughs> R1. Excuse me. Now you convert that to a three family. Now what's that bring it to 650 or 800 square foot units? Because now you're you know, right. jamming all the stuff in there. So I think about it two ways. And I'm probably I'm influenced by the fact that I live in recent, what's now recent 13. So to go back to the infamous house across the street from me that drives me nuts, um, it's 5,000 square feet on a 6,000 square foot lot and would easily accommodate three units if you think about it. 5,000 divided by three is 1,700 square feet. No, which is fine, yeah. but that's not my question. What's the question? My question to you is yeah. you are not going to increase the size nope of the setbacks, requirements, and everything else. So that gives your house a certain size. Yep. All right? From that certain size, you originally set a single family house in there. Yep. Now you put in a three family house in there. So it normally means that each one of those units are gonna be smaller. Yep. Yeah. So what is that size? Have you, have you looked at it like it'd be, oh. we'll be doing putting three families in there that are 600 square feet or 1,000 square feet. I'm not asking you to look at some right. weird thing off to the side somewhere, but you know we have, we have a bunch of land, yeah. R1 that's like 5,000 square feet, everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have- We have an average case. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have rear yard setbacks, we have front yard setbacks, we have two and a half story height mm -hmm. of the building. So what happens when you put three families in there? What are the size of those three families? So, uh, well, let me keep on going, okay? Because I'm pretty sure you haven't done that yet, okay? No, we, we haven't. But, but these are just questions I want to just bring up, and I want you guys to think about it. Okay. Okay. I'm not. I'm not asking for answers right now because okay. it's not fair. <laughs> okay. When you go from a two-family to a three-family, mm -hmm. I think you need two means of egress. So there's now two sets of stairs in your building, unless it's a new building that is sprinkled. Then you're allowed to use one set of egress stairs, okay? So now you're sprinkling buildings that are not sprinkled before, or you're taking up more space for a second set of stairs. Have you thought about how that changes your parameters of what you can come up with here? And then you get to a point where if you look at one unit, to build that within that space there, what's the cost per square foot for that, for that unit? Are we aiming toward affordable units, market rate units, or high end units? You know, uh, I mean, are these like New York condos somewhere out, uh, you know, and we're putting in there that's gonna, you know, that 
the, the small compact units are really ritzy because they can afford to pay extra money for all that. Or are we trying to make it affordable where it's down, you know, not down dirty, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, that, that's going to be economic to build. I just want you to think about that stuff. How when you, because there's other ramifications when you change what you just said, putting a three family as of right into a one single family shell. Okay? And then something else Gina brought up, I thought Gina was going to talk about it, is uh, if this goes to town meeting, Gina, you might, might say no, that. No, no, you, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's multi family, okay? Yep. I think the law says you, all you need is a simple majority to pass a zoning ordinance. Yes. Okay, now if it's a two family, you don't. You need a. Two thirds. Yes. So there's a big difference how you formulate this thing here. Yep. What the ask is and what the approval is. Yes. No, we're, we're very aware. Okay. And it's still very <coughs> clear. I'm just bringing it up. So exactly. I, I'm not trying to. No, no, I'm with you. I think it, I think it comes down again to what will we put in the recommended vote, in, in, and will that be something with, that we that we get a ruling that it can be a simple majority or not? And so there is a possibility of foundering on the rocks there because we just don't know. Yep. Okay. What is allowable under the was it housing choice law with regard to up to three units versus three units. I, I go back to what I said earlier. Yep. I think if you guys have enough time, enough energy, mm -hmm. you think about that it actually yep. comes out in different configurations and whatever yep. else is. Yep. And, and, and get, so the public has an understanding of what it would be like. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, it's still within the, sh you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be different. It's going to be three doors, uh, you know, the parking, mm -hmm. you know, uh, storage. Uh, are you going to have desert? It's going to be all a bunch of questions there that we should at least think about and have some sort of response for that's all. I'm not asking for it now. Mm -hmm. I'm just breaking things up that I've been thinking of when I hear this. Mm -hmm. And I just want uh, it to be somewhat thought about and addressed. No, th those are very good points. I mean, uh, we're definitely hoping to kind of have that ready. Um, I think we plan to have actually prepared quite a, a fair bit of. Is that anything? Throughout the MBTA community's process, there are so many different <coughs> concerns and different types raised. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping and planning to have uh, a lot written to respond to kind of all those different areas and how we think it would fit into that. Um, and I mean, especially, I think it'd be very helpful, like you mentioned, to have here's how we think the redevelopment of single family into this could play out in practice. Um, it is. I mean, if it's if it's simply taking a big single-family house and just renovate all the insides of it, it's simple. It outside still looks the same. Mm -hmm. But if you're building a new three-family, how's that going to look? And how's that going to take shape and form? And what what that can that what's that going to become? And that's two things I think uh, I'd be looking for. Yeah. I think my example, I used to live in a two family in East Arlington, and I, I kind of go to the back to that of one of my uh, kind of ex examples. Um, it was kind of a three bed unit above, and then the standard two family, or sorry, two, two bedroom on the first floor. But I had a fairly large basement. Maybe the kind of three family configuration of that is to take the existing common areas of both basements and you put in kind of a single bedroom studio type thing in the basement with the egress and, and whatnot. Um, but like I said, that's just kind of my impression. I think there's a, look, there's a lot more to actually look at. Uh, Any other questions? I have a couple. Just one last one. Uh, be careful how you, when you lay this stuff out, and if you, if you put three one bedrooms in this one area, mm -hmm. or as you could put three three bedrooms, there's a big difference is it's due with families. Now you're changing the, uh, the population here from a younger population to a population that may have families. So 
you know, if you if you build a whole bunch of these, now it's not not now it's not a family oriented town or something. I don't know. You got to think about that kind of stuff. Okay, that's all I'm saying. No, that makes sense. I mean, I think I think it, we we would love to keep the existing R three um, some some elements of that, or like if, if we thought it would potentially ever pass, we would be very interested in. Okay, the actual three, like full three stories instead of the two and a half floors, stuff like that. But it doesn't seem like it would, so this is what we're kind of looking at. Okay, great. I just have um, two additional questions. I think you've already had some really great questions and food for thought um, offered to you by, by my other board members here. Um, I just want to make sure that I understand your intent. Um, so if town council comes back and says that um, proposing two and three family dwellings by right is would not meet the requirements of housing choice would your intent be to have an article that um, solely dealt with three families so that you could take advantage of the um, housing choice simple majority or would you go with the two and continue with the two and three and uh, move forward with the super majority. I, I think, I know what my perspective is, I don't know JP how you think about it, but my, my perspective is that if we can craft an article that would allow for more, again, a greater variety of housing types and housing choice in Arlington, that we could have available under the housing choice law and we had a 50% vote at town meeting that we have a possibility of making that happen. If it's a two-thirds vote, then it feels like a big fight for us to lose, which is what our experience was with two family. Mm -hmm. We came close to a simple majority, but we did not come close to two-thirds. Now, I think it, the Overton window is shifting, okay, but apropos of Jean's argument, it's coming really fast on top of MPT and and I'm not sure that that fight would be a good one to win to town meeting. So my feeling is I would have to decide that either it makes sense from a zoning perspective <coughs> to proceed with three family, and I would expect all of you to advise us on that, okay, because we're not the zoning experts here, um, or to say, no, we'll, we'll fight this battle another day, as Jean says, after we see what META does for us yep. in terms of three family configurations in those zones and how do people feel about them. And then you might have a, a better opportunity to spread the love throughout the time. Okay. Exactly. Yep. So that certainly answers my question. And um, I think what I wanted to offer back, that, that was my understanding. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't misunderstanding, um, is that I think the proposition of allowing for two and three family homes in the R0, R1, and 2 districts is one thing that I think we would consider in, in one vein, mm -hmm. skipping over the two family and just going to the three family. And again, I'll just speak for myself, not for my other board members, just to take advantage of the super majority mm -hmm. to me feels um, disin disingenuous to what you know, again, it was intended for. Um, I think that, it, to me, it would be one conversation. You know, if, if they're both allowed, you know, per town council, that's one thing, and we'll discuss that. If it winds up being just the three family, and we, again, have one and, and three, and we have to remain silent on two because we're trying to get something through in a specific type of vote, I don't know that that's something that I personally would feel comfortable supporting with, with my so I just want to share my perspective with you up front. I totally get it. Right. Okay. And, I, and I'm not sure I disagree with you. Okay. And it feels like a little weird bobble in the right. zoning bylaw to do that. And so. Yeah. So again, I'm just kind of looking at the continuity yeah. of, of the language and, and what we have to offer. Um, if it either, however way it turns out, I think um, precinct meetings and speaking with people in these neighborhoods is something that's going to be really, really Im important um, 
I think that that was really hopeful when we saw how many people who um, supported all sides and angles of the debate around MBTA communities came out. And I think that um, you're going to have a lot of interest in, in this if it moves forward. And the more types of people that you're able to bring to the table, the, the, the better. So I would just um, say that this, again, knowing how much time and effort we put into as a town, bringing people together to debate this to make sure that we could come up with something that the town aligned on. Um, I, I would hate to, um, I want to make sure that that same goodwill is, um, is echoed here. And I know that you both believe in that as well. I just yep. wanted to make sure that that's clear for everyone, yep. that this, this would require um, public process. a public process. Yeah, we, we're, we're definitely committed to doing kind of whatever we can to provide for all piece of public input on it. Um, I'm very willing to be kind of looking for the right venues for that are uh, in terms of whether you'd like to have potential redevelopment board meetings or special sessions or I don't yeah kind of what um, yeah under under whose auspices or how you think that that could right. be done um, with less to try to organize that privately if if you think right. that'd be helpful. I mean I, I think. And again, I'll turn it over to Jean and Steve, both who raised their hands to, to, to discuss. Um, the challenge with it being, again, a citizen petition is that you know the planning department and the redevelopment board can advise and, and support, but a lot of this falls to, right. it's to you as opposed to the, the board. And so again, I just want to make sure that, you're, um, that that's something that you're keeping top of mind to. Thank you. Okay. Very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Gene. I have a couple of additional thoughts. One was, which will get assessed at a higher value, a 6,000 square foot single family home or a mm -hmm. building with three 2,000 square foot units? I think it would be really helpful for you to talk to the assessor and get us some answers yeah. about um, what are the tax implications of doing this? Because you would expect more people in a three unit building than a one unit building. <coughs> Theoretically, maybe more kids, maybe not. So I think it would be helpful to understand if the town's gonna have some of those extra expenses, is are they offset, at least in part, by you know, the additional tax revenues that would come in. So I'd be really interested in, in knowing um, yeah, what, that, what that would be like. Uh, uh, I can talk to Dana and Alex, but I think there's also, we do have some ways of looking at data along those lines. We probably know what the differences between X square foot of two family or three family now and what the assessment well, You, you might want to yeah. actually talk to someone yeah. on the board as this assessors to get yeah, no, an no, idea no. about how they would do the analysis for something like this in the R0 or R1 or R2 zones. So we get an idea about you know comparing a new single family versus this or old single family that's converted into a two or three as Shana suggested and, and what would it do for tax revenues for the town. I'd be very interested in understanding that and and I'm sort of leaning where Rachel is on you know if there are no two families in the Warren article it seems a little wrong right, to allow ones and threes in the R1 and R2 but not twos in the R2 and you know that the old old theory of Euclidean zoning was in, in like the Single family, you could have single families. In two families, you could have singles and twos. In the three families, you could have ones and twos and threes. So this would be not necessarily illegal, but very odd to say there's a district where you can have one family and three family, but not two family yeah. homes. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, I think it kind of boggled all of our minds when we started hearing stuff that happened, like the housing choice wouldn't let you, like, I don't, I mean, I don't think, if, even if it doesn't allow it, I don't, can't imagine how the legislature, legislature 
ten. Uh, that they have a situation where a town wants to add two and three, and it wouldn't apply. But um, yeah, so no, I, I, we definitely got that. It, it is a little weird. <laughs> Great, Steve. I, I was I, I just uh, echo that in you know, allowing one and three, but not two. From a planning perspective, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. So I mean, I would prefer to go to you know have continuity in the number of dwellings, even if it meant go, requiring a higher threshold. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Any other questions for the board? No. Thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Listening to us. <laughs> Hardly competitive. I thought it was a very, very thoughtful discussion. So right. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you all very much. All right. All right. And I believe we have another um, citizen more article discussion this evening. So welcome. Um, and we have uh, it's like Andy Greenspan joining us this evening. So if you could just introduce yourself, first and last name and address for the record, and then um, if you would like to take us through the presentation you have prepared, that would be fantastic. Sure. Um, Andy Greenspan, uh, 89 Palmer Street, Precinct 5. Um, this is about uh, rear setbacks in the business district. It, you may notice it's nearly identical proposed warrant language from one in special town meeting because it's something I noticed as we were debating language that was approved for a special town meeting. Uh, next. So if, if I'm wrong about my interpretation of the existing language, please let me know after this. But my interpretation of the existing language um, was that when you go for a business district parcel that abuts a residential in the rear, um, if you go from a three-story building to a four-story building, based on my reading of the existing language, the entire setback of the entire building has to go from 20 feet to 30 feet. And so this proposed language would change that so that for um, such a building, it would be 20 feet for the first three stories and then above that 30 feet just for the fourth and higher stories. Um, and I'm open to tweaking this language in a way that makes the most syntactical sense, but this is just what I thought of. Uh, next. Um, so my understanding under current zoning is if you had um, a three-story business district building, um, and on the left is a two-and-a-half-story residential building. Uh, at the lot line, you would need 20 feet uh, rear setback, but if you wanted a four-story building, the entire thing would have to be pushed back. Uh, next. And I believe my language would make this the result um, if it was adopted, which is just the fourth and higher story would be uh, 30 foot back. Um, next. So my reasoning when I was thinking about this is um, if you have to decrease or increase the setback for every other story to add a fourth story in a business district, it seems like it would decrease the economic feasibility of construction, especially since a lot of Arlington's lots are small. Um, so it may end up actually capping like what would be built with the current setbacks. So this is an example I have based on an estimate of what I think are some realistic lot sizes based on my own two family and walking around, which is if you had a building that was 100 feet wide um, and the depth of the building is 60 feet because you need a 20 foot setback if there's a residential behind you, um, ignoring stairwells and everything, it would be 6,000 square feet per floor, you get 18,000 square feet. If you wanted a fourth floor, you'd have to decrease the setback or increase the setback of every story. Um, so that you'd only be able to actually add 2,000 square feet in the construction of adding a fourth floor. Um, and with the proposed amendment, you get an extra 3,000 square feet relative to status quo. So it'd be fairly similar. You'd actually get the economic, in my view, economic viability of adding the third, uh, fourth story. Um, next. Um, so given Arlington's small parcel sizes, I, I haven't you know, talked to anyone. I'm not, this is sort of for you, for you all, I'm not a builder, but um, Given the shrinking of floor plate, the depth of floor plate, if you had to add that fourth story, I, I am worried that with the existing language, um, there may be sort of a default financial cap of actually adding a fourth or fifth story in areas where that, that height limit is already allowed, but it may de facto financially be really three stories, which would defeat the purpose of um, existing use story limits in other parts of the business plan. Uh, next. 
Um, and I was trying to look at adjacent communities. Somerville um, overhauled their zoning code a little recently, so it makes it very easy for me to find um, the comparison. And this is what I thought of when we were discussing this at town meeting, which is they do sort of essentially the same thing. Mid-rise is close in Somerville to business district or mixed use. Um, and they have four or five or six story districts, but regardless of the max height um, for neighborhood residential is the same as Arlington residential effectively. For the first to third story um, abutting residential, it's 20 feet. And then for every story above, it's, it's 30 feet. So that was the closest comparison I could find. Um, next, I did try to find like Medford, Malden, Lexington, Belmont. Um, their zoning codes are uh, much harder to read through, so I couldn't find an exact comparison. And they all, a lot of them seem to still use the old L plus H over 10 or six that we purposely simplified for. So it's hard to make an apples to apples comparison. But if anyone knows, I'm happy to sort of hear. Um, I think that's it. So I'm Great. happy to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. We'll start with Ken. Thank you. Um, I agree with you. Uh, what you got here is fine. Uh, I think it does not make sense uh, if you go another story to push the whole building back. Uh, we're trying to uh, uh, encourage business. I think this is a good thing. And you're not adding any more additional shadow uh, to your neighbors while, while encouraging business. I think this is a win-win. Right. Uh, you are somewhat correct. Um, when you do the four story, you have to evaluate the extra elevator stop and the two uh, extra stair risers to the top. What, what's that gonna, uh, that premium you got to pay for uh, is it worth that square footage? Most of the time, in the shallow uh, uh, site plans we have uh, along Bass Ave, in some of the areas, is not. It just doesn't make sense to add in all the floor because you're, you're adding all that extra to it. But where it, it becomes bigger plates, it does make sense. So this might not apply everywhere. But I think it's a, it's a good thing. I think we should uh, modify it. And I agree with you. Uh, so, yes, I support this wholeheartedly. Great. Thank you. I am supportive. Shana? Um, I am also supportive. I'm lo I was looking for the language in the bylaw about front step backs. Um, I wonder if you end up getting the top floor squeezed. Um, above above three stories um, uh, and having it be and having it be a uh, further economic burden I think it um, in the end doesn't actually matter that much you lose the square footage with the um, with the loss of um, backyard uh, rear yard space or um, or the increased here rear yard space or the squeezed setback, but um, but I do I do wonder about that. However, one way or another, I'm supportive. I think it's a it's a very thoughtful solution. Great, thank you, Jean. I guess two thoughts. One mm -hmm. is we would probably also need mm -hmm. to change a definition of setback. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I hadn't looked at this before, Andy, but I think you need to take a we need to take a look at not simply changing what you're doing there, but take a look at the definitions and some other things to see if we need to do something with them too so we don't end up with some conflicting language from one part of the zoning bylaw to another. Um, the second is right now all of the buildings you mentioned are going to have to come to the Redevelopment Board for an Environmental Design Review. Mm -hmm. And Environmental Design Review, we are allowed to change the required setbacks already. So I don't know if this is absolutely necessary to do, but it's worth thinking about. But I'm more concerned that if you're going to propose that one change to that one section, that we need to look through 
the rest of the zoning bylaw and maybe adjust. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it. some of the other things, so we don't end up with unusual word. Great. Thank you, Gene. Steve? Yeah, uh, I'm also supportive. Um, in my lunchtime uh, ritual of reading other community zoning amendments, um, I'm working on one that, you know, they, they don't do front yard setbacks. It, it's all rear yard. Um, which I thought was, I, I'm sort of warming up to the idea in terms of as a way to, you know, if you're in front of a building, you have, uh, you have the street to provide some separation, but you don't necessarily get so much of that in on a rear yard. And the step backs provide a way on the back of the building, provide a way for light to get in. But I, I do take your point about um, the point about, you know, by not requiring the whole rear facade to come in, you are preserving more space in the ground floor, and I, I think that's a good thing. Okay. Um, can Please. I respond? Um, Absolutely. Oh. One other question. Please. I mean, some of the buildings are going to be taller than four stories. So what do you do? Do they step back? I no? mean, as far as I know, it still wouldn't, this change wouldn't affect the, the shadows because the three stories, like if you add those, like, Shrinking the first to third story won't um, affect the. No, no, what I'm saying. Oh, if, it, if it's, it's a, for fourth and fourth and higher. So it would stay at so fourth 30. and higher if you just. Would, would still be the 30 okay. foot, which I think is okay. would have been is the case in the existing okay. language. Yeah, it says fourth or higher. Okay. Um, so I have a quick response on a question um, regarding the special, I think you said environmental review. Um, I understand you can sort of. I guess by, I don't know what the rule is. You're allowed to decrease the rear setback based on certain parameters. I still think it's good to have a sensible like baseline of the rear setback because if a, uh, a someone trying to build may not even consider doing the fourth story, if there's a risk like it'll be denied and it's not even financially feasible. So I think knowing that at that rear yard setback, they have something that's financially feasible, and then environmental review, maybe it will, you, you all might choose to make it less, but there's a baseline that is financially feasible, is sort of my thought. Um, regarding setback and step back, I know both are used in the zoning, and I'm not sure how consistent it is, because I could have written this as like, uh, like a setback, right, instead, technically. Like, the, the, the top stories have a setback. Step, step back. back. Step, step back. Step back. Wait, which, which, which one's the current, the current one? In the life step in the back is, a, is is on the is on the like. Think of step back as the, the ground floor. Yeah. And step back is. Yeah. So so I could have said like for the for those stories have a ten foot step back right and it would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. I yeah as I said syntactically, I don't have a strong opinion. I just want to know what makes the most. Sense and I'm happy to take whatever language um, you all or with the um, town council suggests. Um, yeah, I can. It, maybe I can talk so later because I'm not sure. I'm not sure where where else we should talk zone. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it runs into a problem with the definition of setback. Okay. So we may want to call this a step back. Sure. So we should just figure out what to do about it. Yeah, that's fine. Gene, would you be fine um, with um, Andy reaching out to you yep. specifically? Sure. Okay, great. Yeah. Once your phone is on the right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, um, but either way, the, the language, which I basically, I could just use the same language as previous, a previous article, right? Can you the the language, I think, is essentially the same as from the spec. You can send the same, have the same, article again, right, broad article, as well, and do something else, right? Like, I think, I'm pretty sure I took this exactly from the one in uh, special town meeting to ensure it would allow step back or, yeah, uh, st step back or step back. Just, just yeah, that to, gives you latitude. Yeah. Well, you're not allowing for a variable rear yard setback, which is the difference. So you uh, might, we can, we can massage this a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just yeah. Um, yeah, between now and Friday. I'll check. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you Thanks. very much. All right. Um,
Let's see. So that closes agenda item number two, citizen warrant articles. And we will now move to agenda item number three, which is the redevelopment board warrant articles. Great. Thank you. So <clears throat> we're looking at um, four warrant articles um, to be presented by the ARB, um, suggested by the CDA. Um, I think we've probably talked um, enough about those. Um, we did get, um, uh, pardon me, um, Jean did bring, um, bring forward some proposed actual uh, language um, related to the, I'm sorry, I'm looking for a document. In our uh, agenda, Jean did offer some uh, proposed actual um, article language um, that I sent around, I circulated to the board to review. Um, and I think um, we can agree, or we can certainly discuss um, the language uh, as they relate to as it relates to those four um, warrant articles. Still to be discussed is the reduced height buffer area, um, and the language um, of of that uh, of that uh, potential warrant article. Um, so I've included um, from Jean uh, two drafts. One related to the. Uh, three warrant articles um, minus the um, deletion of the inland wetland um, overlay district as well as um, uh, the reduced height buffer area which is draft from the former assistant director Kelly Linema um, to be discussed um, by the group this evening. Can I ask a question? Um, we had discussed the redevelopment board taking on the um, inland wetland article. We, we did. Um, so what is the status of that? Would that be put forward then since we don't have that? Oh, we do have that too. We do have that. So Okay, so maybe that, maybe I looked at an earlier version. Yeah, the, the, the inland wetland, um, the potential, we can look at the potential um, language for the Warren article and then, um, you know, the, the actual main motion is still to be uh, drafted. That's totally fine. Yep, yeah, I just missed that on the one I was looking at. Okay, um, so let's take these one at a time and see if there are any um, amendments to these. And um, what I would like to do is to take a vote on e um, on the on them as a group, unless uh, we are not able to come to an agreement on um, a single one of them. I don't know that we need to vote on them individually. Um, again, unless that there's unless there's one that we want to pull out specifically. So let's start with the zoning bylaw amendment related to building definitions. Any um, revisions or corrections to the proposed warrant article language? Starting with Ken. Um, with this one here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, to see if the town will vote to amend section two definitions. Yeah. No, no issues. Shana. No issues. Jean? No, and I, I ran this by both Christian Klein and Mike Kemp, and they both said fine. That's what they thought we were doing. Okay, great. Steve? Uh, looks good to me. Great. Um, and again, I am at this point, I think we're just looking at the uh, article language, not the draft amendment. Um, if there are any specific items that you do want to discuss regarding the draft amendment, that's fine. Um, but for this time, I think the majority of our discussion will keep around the articles. Um, the next one is uh, the zoning bylaw amendment related to administrative clarification um, for section 5.4.2A. And I'll start with Ken. No. No, no uh, additions or corrections? Correct. Shana? No issues. Gene. I omitted a word when I typed this. In the second line after zoning, there should be the word bylaw. So some found elsewhere in the zoning bylaw. Great. Would we be able to add that in? Yes. Yeah. Word document open. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, Mr. Uh, Benson already proposed adding the word I wanted to see as well. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So nothing further. OK, great. Um, the next one is the zoning bylaw amendment related to administrative correction. Um, and that is to change the bullet points to letters uh, for uh, consistency. 
and I will see Ken if you have any additions or corrections. No, not that we're changing it to numbers, but either way, it's fine. Um, Gene? No change. And we were, some of them, some of them, uh, I think we changed some of the numbers under the accessory dwelling units. Um, there was a section that need, needed to be remo removed. And uh, we were just looking for consistency. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Shana? None. Steve? Looks fine. Okay. Um, and then the one that I don't have on my screen, the um, Inland Wetland Overlay District. I'll just read this out since this is not in the um, package. To see if the town will vote to delete Section 5.8 Inland Wetland Overlay District from the zoning bylaw, um, which should be capitalized for consistency. Yeah. as it is redundant to the Wetland Protection Act jurisdictional area governed by the Conservation Commission or take any action related thereto. Take any other action. Take any other action. Oh, any action, I'm sorry. That's fine? Yeah, okay. sorry. So we get rid of related thereto? No, we, we no. keep that. Okay. Madam okay. Chair? Yes, is there, a, is there a comma before or? Or take any re action related thereto? Uh, there's some usually sort of a semicolon. semicolon. Yeah. Or, yeah, some sort of punctuation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other additions or corrections? Is the board okay with this um, as it is redundant to the W uh, Dwelling Protection Act jurisdictional area governed by the Conservation Commission, or should that be removed? I was thinking that that should be removed because yeah. that's really mm -hmm. what we get to in the body of the article. I think it's just we're, we're removing, we're deleting the section. Yeah. So, so I guess the question is, we're also going to renumber section 5.9 as section 5.8. Do we need to put that in there or not? because there's 5.8, which we're getting rid of, and there's 5.9, so I don't know if the... So 5.9 becomes 5.8. 5 do we need to put that in the... Or is that, or is that or part is of that the take any action, action related there, too? Let's put it in. Okay. Or can you just say, and adjust the numbering of subsequent sections? Yeah, you can yeah. say that, too. Perfect. No. Steve? Nothing here. All right. So I think that those are, are our, uh, the ARB's warrant articles for um, 2024 Springtown meeting. Let me just get back to this here. Is there a motion to um, approve? Is there a motion to uh, approve and submit? The uh, Warren article, the Warren articles uh, as amended. We haven't done the hypo for you, so Let's come back to that then. Yes, <laughs> height buffer. Jean, go for it. Um, so I found um, what Kelly had drafted, which is in the materials, both the draft of what the Warren article was, and then her suggestion for um, what the actual main motion would be with some alternatives and her discussion. But I thought it was a little bit too limiting. So I wrote on the second page three <coughs> alternative suggested edits. And the one I like is the last one that says to see if the town will vote to amend section 5.3.19, reduce height buffer area in the zoning bylaw to alter the height buffer area requirements or take any other action related there too. And I, I thought we should keep it fairly broad because we have mm -hmm. not had any discussion about how we want this to actually mm -hmm. go. And I thought that was sufficient for a Warren article but gave us the most flexibility. So I would favor the, my last of the alternatives. I would agree. Ken, any thoughts? 
Sure. I think that's great. The, th the last of the three this options. One here. The seat. Yep. Yep. Okay, Shana. Makes sense to me. Steve. Also supportive. Do. So you've confirmed. I know that we had a question around whether or not that was the correct it is, section. It is. Right. Um, Bless you. Thank you. And the or take any action related thereto if there's any other section that needs to be amended or covered yeah, there. Although I don't think there is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, we'll get to this later. The big question to me is how much this is needed since we just last town meeting adjusted the rear setbacks. Right. To make them more consistent with what's in back. So, you know, there is a question about how much. This is needed at all. Okay. Great. All right. Any other additions, corrections to this item? Now, is there a motion to um, submit the uh, foreign articles as amended for spring 2024 town meeting? I'll move that. So moved. Right. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all. And thank you, Claire, for facilitating that submission. All right. Uh, let's move to the uh, uh, agenda item number four, which is the warrant article hearing schedules. So. We, um, I went back um, and we took a look uh, at our, our meeting schedule <clears throat> and the close of the warrant um, to uh, sort of uh, flesh out and, and forecast what sort of what meetings we would need um, to uh, bring bring these warrant articles to town meeting. And so this is a proposed schedule. Um, we think that um, we can hold the ARB the regular meetings in um, February on the fifth and the twenty sixth. Um, with the um, relevant notice, um, we can do hearing number one um, to do the ARB and ZBA articles um, on the night of the 26th. Um, the fourth, which is another regular ARB meeting, would be hearing number two to do any citizen petition articles. Um, we could hold the 11th potentially um, for a continued hearing of one or two if necessary. Um, but we did think a lot about the affordable housing overlay. Um, and if that is advanced, what we may need um, for a hearing related to that, um, you know, uh, uh, article. Um, so we held the 18th. Um, we are considering um, uh, reserving town hall uh, for that uh, warrant article. We think that there, uh, if we are going to be sending a mailing to all 20,000 addresses um, in Arlington uh, for a town-wide overlay, uh, we should likely, uh, probably best, uh, best for us to hold that hearing um, in in a larger venue. Um, we would have a regular meeting on 4-1 to deliberate and vote. Um, the draft report to town meeting um, will be uh, drafted and posted on the 4th, and then the meeting on the 8th, um, we would do any revisions and vote to approve um, the ARB report to town meeting um, as revised. I don't know how folks feel about this schedule. Um, or about the idea that we would hold um, the affordable housing overlay hearing um, in a larger venue. Um, or any other uh, comments or discussion? So I'll, I just have one question um, related to the hearing on the 26th. We would need to, or I guess it's more of a comment than anything else, we would need to, as a board, um, have a really fruitful discussion on the meeting on the 5th regarding the reduced height buffer area um, so that we had the language ready to go for that, which I don't think is a problem. Um, and we would also need to make sure, and I, and I think that um, they were pretty well down the, the path with regard to creating their materials um, to make sure that the conservation um, Commission with their, um, you know, would have their materials ready for the inland um, wetland district piece for that meeting. Um, 
Um, I'm still really concerned about the affordable housing overlay going to 2024 special town meeting. If they decide to push forward with it, that's fine. I just don't think that there's been nearly enough public process. But that's my point of view. Ken? <coughs> this is a great job, uh, what you got here. I'm a little concerned that we're shutting down uh, development here for two and a half months. Are there room where we can fit in other projects that may come up for uh, for our review? I don't want to say, hey, you know, someone has a boss of project and they want to develop something. We'll say you can't present it until uh, till summer or till early uh, late summer. You know, so if we can sort of leave slots open. I'm not saying there is any. Mm. I, I, yeah. You, you probably know better than I do this, not right now. Not right now. Well, I mean, even when we did MBTA communities, we would start with any uh, new development and then move into the warrant article hearings. Um, I think that happened on a couple of the non-MBTA communities. So, for example, I don't think hearing number one is going to take long at all. No, I'm not worried about one. I'm worried about further down the line. Uh, I'm worried. I'm worried about uh, early March and yeah. and, and uh, late. I just yeah. I think it. if we have two nights though for the citizen petition articles outside of the affordable housing overlay, mm -hmm. that I think we should be able. You know, based on what we've heard, should we just put a slash saying if any projects that may come up? Yes. Just so we put notice. So just yeah, for sure. I just want to make sure that we don't leave all that behind. I just this, this is very important. But I, I want to make sure we have enough slots available if any projects come up for our review. Sure, we will uh, prioritize that um, in addition to you know any of these hearings as there. And especially, um, did we get any, get anything back from the one we talked about last project? Or? We did get an updated rendering back. I think uh, that's on our uh, it's agenda under new business. Under new business. Okay, then I'll just keep on going. Just for temporarily. Okay. Shana. Okay. <laughs> uh, looks great. Right. Jean? Yeah, I think it looks good. The, the, in, in addition to what Ken mentioned about recognizing that, who knows, there may be some special permit uh, issues coming in. I just wonder whether this proposal we heard about tonight to allow two and threes in the R zero ones and twos will have a lot of people come out, and whether we need town hall for that also, I just don't know. But I think it is the other one that could bring out a lot of people. Right. The question to what Claridge is putting in is: I was thinking the exact same thing. Is do we do both of those on the same night? We could restrict the timing on on both of those. Give them each ninety minutes. And um, yeah, so that yeah, that that that's my only comment. Otherwise, I think that's a good way, a good way to go. Great. The, the actually, I'll, I'll just mention, we asked um, when David Morgan and uh, Chuck Taroni were here on the Inland Wetland, we asked for some information from them, which we have not received. Understood. I will follow up with Chuck and uh, with David. Great. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm fine with the schedule as posted, but I do think there is merit in considering the three-family article in, along with the affordable housing overlay uh, yeah, in, a, in a larger venue. Okay. Great. Super. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting that together. Sure. And I'll uh, have a, a final schedule um, at, at our next meeting. Great, thank you very much. All right, uh, so let's move to our next uh, agenda item, which is the proposed changes to the board rules and regulations for site plan review. Okay, I'll turn it over to you. Great. <coughs> so um, I circulated, and um, Jean was thoughtful enough to draft for us, uh, draft for me, uh, uh, change to Rule 20. Um, and the ARB rules and regulations. Tonight is just a discussion of the draft. Um, we do have to advertise and hold a hearing for specific rule uh, changes um, to, the, to the regs. 
Um, but I thought we could kick off the conversation or at least continue our conversation that we started at the board retreat in December um, with this draft. Um, so, Jean, I turn it over to you. Yeah, if I can just say a few things how it got to this point. This is um, an amalgam and a synthesis of the draft that um, Claire sent to us a while ago, along with um, the handbook from, I think it was CTPC, mm -hmm. on site plan review. I liberally borrowed pieces of that for this, plus um, pieces that currently exist in the um, rules and regulations. So, and a little bit from um, Chapter 40A of the General Laws. So it, it was my attempt in a first draft to put all of those together. Um, a couple things I think we can think about as we go through them. Um, as Claire had suggested in her draft, a site plan review pre-application meeting would be required. I am wondering whether it should be optional for very small projects, let's say four and fewer units on the side streets, and mandatory for everything else, or if it should be mandatory for everything. That's one sort of big question about this. Um, um, second was um, in, in the first draft, people couldn't file their application until they got approval of their affordable housing proposal, which didn't make sense to me because I don't think you can stop somebody from filing an application. So I flipped this around so that they would, as part of the application, would have to get a letter from either um, the department or the affordable housing trust that their <coughs> affordable housing proposal is satisfactory. And, um, and then most of the application timetable and review process is pretty much the same as the EDR process now. So it would run on the same schedule as the EDR process. The approval after three years is the same as the EDR process. And the extension is the same as under, um, except the, um, the CTPC suggested only allowing a one-year extension, but since we just allowed it two-year for something, I thought two years made more sense. So we allowed a two-year extension. Other than that, it's pretty much copied from the guidebook. And, and that's where a lot of it came from. And a lot of what's proposed to be discussed at the, um, at the initial discussion came from a combination of what was in Claire's draft, what is um, in the CTPC um, materials, and what we're allowed to do in the site plan review. So that's it. Great, thank you. Uh, let's start with Steve for comments. Okay, uh, I have four comments. Uh, three are clerical and one is substantive. Uh, so well, I'll start with the clerical ones. Uh, in 20.5, um, so what does the applicant propose to build on the site? Where will the buildings be located? What will the proposed buildings look like? Uh, it suggests adding the word and after the last comma. Okay, second clerical change is uh, suggested. In 20.B.7, there's an open parenthesis. If affordable housing <laughs> will be provided, DPCD may require the applicant to be with. And it just stops. Oh, it's right. you, Steve. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say the. Um, the it looks like the material is covered in the uh, last paragraph of 20B, so maybe maybe we don't need that part. Um, 20.B.14. Point point uh, where does the applicant plan to put signs, if any? I'd suggest a comma before if any. And now the substantive part. Um, so 20D deals with lapse. So an approval granted under site plan review shall lapse after three years from its issuance if substantial use or construction is not commenced within the three-year period. Now, the section, the corresponding section we have for EDR, which is 335B, has two additional aspects. 
One is um, excluding time required to pursue or await determination of an appeal. And the second is adding an exception for good cause. So you couldn't start for three years, but there was a, a good reason. So um, if I can read out loud, I have a I proposed amendment. Please. Okay. So uh, an approval granted under site plan review shall lapse after three years from its issuance if substantial use or construction has not commenced within the three-year period, comma, except for good cause. New sentence. This three-year period shall not include time required to pursue or await the ter determination of a court appeal. Okay. And I just took that language out of um, the EDR section. Any concerns no. with that revision? No. Gene? No, I think that that's a good change. Okay. So I think the only thing we would then do <coughs> in the next sentence, we would delete the phrase for good cause shown at the end because we put the good cause oh, okay. in the previous, and I had moved it down there. Oh, all right. So we can re delete the one. So they'd say for a period not to exceed two years, period. Mm -hmm. We don't need for good cause shown down there. Yeah, I think those are good changes. Okay, nothing further. Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, Shana. Um, <clears throat> so recognizing that much of this follows EDR, uh, I, did, I did have some concerns uh, first about timelines in D, D1, um, having si uh, 65 days um, to start the hearing, and then again D2 and D3. These are really long time periods. Uh, uh, 65 days and 90 days um, for continuance, um, and then another 90 days after closure. Um, for final action. Um, so again, recognizing that this that this is in line with other regs, this is this is. I wonder if these time frames are potentially onerous. Um, so that was one uh, one of my thoughts, and and the other non-administrative thought, because Steve, you are incredibly good at picking up, uh, picking up the administrative <laughs> changes. <laughs> um, so my other administrative thought was, was essentially to the nature of site plan review. I'm, I'm a little concerned that, um, that for projects that are of right, we're reviewing we're, we're doing really robust review, um, and I know we talked a little bit about this last time and, and uh, let it lie, but some of these things are sort of obvious that, that they ought to be reviewed, right? Um, uh, health and safety and, and uh, things relating to health and safety and, and traffic and things like that, but more discretionary items, um, uh, like landscaping or design, I, I get concerned, um, I, I get concerned about the extent to which we, um, yeah, we have discretionary review over over proposals that are of right, and how is that? Is there a point at which it needs to be limited or advisory? Um, um, yeah, great. Thank you. Um, I have just a couple items. Um, one is related to um, in section A where you define how site plan review will be, um, where it will be applied. Um, 
knowing that we may want to use site plan review mm -hmm. more, more robustly in the future, um, is this hemmed in too much specifically with referring to it um, for parcels located within a multifamily housing overlay district? Um, or should we identify on parcels, um, you know, at, in locations as or in in districts or et cetera, as identified in the zoning bylaws, or parcels that require site plan review, or process that right. So I guess my question is: Are, are we hemming this in too much, only to need to potentially revise this in the future? Just a general question for us to consider. Um, I also wanted to see if we wanted to require any documentation for the bonus height provisions or if we felt that that was adequately covered in the zoning bylaw. Um, there are very specific requirements and we do say that those are subject to review by the redevelopment board, so I want to make sure we own that someplace in the documentation. Um, and to the point around design, I was actually really pleased to see that we included design review because when we decided to support the MBTA community's provision, um, I know that I did so with the caveat that design review would absolutely be required. Um, I think that this board um, made the commitment to the town that we would ensure that what was being built was in alignment with the um, the um, the landscape of the town and the um, the existing vernacular. Okay. Any comments? Questions? Yeah. Under section B, <coughs> uh, I'm not sure. Is this implied or is this stated somewhere else? But. Uh, it asks for all these um, uh, <coughs> things, one from one to fifteen. But in what form? Is it just a handwritten note, or is it a drawing? Uh, you know, a good example is uh, uh, let's see, where where the bicycle. Uh, 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 parking uh, where's pedestrian walk on the site I mean we should say something like drawings or something like so, that so let me let me sort of respond to a few things one was if you'll notice the next thing it says after B is site plan review application required we have not written that application mm -hmm. my thought was the application is where all those things will be required similar to what we do with the EDR application. So, so it would be narrative or C drawing. Right. So the, the missing piece that needs to be done is to do what the application is going to look like, because that's where it would say you must include these documents. <coughs> then I'm fine. Right. So we just haven't done that yet. Okay. Because when I looked at this, I'm saying, well. Right. Yeah. No, so, no. you know, because, and, and, you know, Claire and I discussed this when I, I came into our office last week to to discuss this in that I thought it was better to have that all in the application than in here because if we use the application for a while and decide we want to make changes in it, we can do it. We don't have to go out for public hearing, all those other sorts of things like we would have to do with the, um, with the rules and regulations. So I thought the application was the place to, to put all of those, all of those things. Um, Okay, could I just ask for a footnote in that if we ask if a 3D model is required, <laughs> it would be submitted to us for us to use in our model? Let's put that in the application, Claire. Yes. If one yeah. is required. I'm not saying you yep, have yep. to do a 3D model yep. for every little project. I say if one is required for yep. explaining this, let's have it. Yeah. Um, be before we get to some of the other comments, I f did forget to mention one thing, and that is I wrote that a majority vote of the five members is required, so rather than the supermajority that's required for some 
special permits, this would just be a simple majority, three out of five that's required for site plan review. Um, on, on Shana's question about the timing, I don't know how much we can tighten the timing because this requires the same sort of notifications that go out ahead of time, so they have to be in the newspaper, and then there has to be a notification. So I'm not sure how much those things can be tightened up. Claire may have an idea about whether we can or should tighten them up very much without sort of just falling over the deadlines too soon. So that's why I copied this from the EDR, because it works. Well, and recognizing, of course, that this mirrors exists, right? It mirrors the EDR. So, right. Right. Um, so it may simply make sense to have it mirror existing procedure. Uh, it is, though, you know, the 35 days for the board, uh, for all of the departments to comment, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and then the other, the other periods seem to, some of them, be longer than I've seen in other <coughs> municipalities. Uh, but, but again, if that's what's in the EDR, it may open a, um, it may be a much larger discussion than we're prepared to have here. <laughs> <laughs> and easier for the staff, I think, to be on the same time schedule. Yep, for, I think that's right. For both of these. And what, what were the other ones? Rachel, you had mentioned something. Yes, I had a question around whether or not um, we hemmed ourselves in too right. much by referring to multifamily, or if we should, um, again, <coughs> Instead, <coughs> identify um, that this applies as, um, or we're identified in the zoning bylaw as opposed to being specific to multifamily districts. Well, you know, the, the thing about the <coughs> previous paragraph, single sentence above it, the redevelopment board shall review a site plan in accordance with section 5.9.3, that's also. Right, there are a couple of places. There are a yeah. couple of places there. Um, so, I don't know if we're hemming ourselves in or if we just amend these if there's another site plan review thing that comes through. Right. I, I guess my thought was um, trying not to have both point back at each other. If this one already points to site plan review, can we strike yes, both of so those is, is yes. the question and still. I think we, I think we can. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I just put something in, you know, redevelopment board shall review a site plan in accordance with the zoning bylaw. Great. And we can leave out the next paragraph. Perfect. Um, and then there was another question around whether or not we need to include anything in here around required documentation for the bonus height provisions. Like we would put that in the application. Application. Okay. The perfect. application is going to carry a lot of stuff. Perfect. One comment I have is that yes, I think when we apply site plan review to you know the MBTA communities, the neighborhood multifamily, etc., that it is indeed you know the simple majority vote. But if we are going to uh, <coughs> we want a site plan review on other forms of development or whatever, it may not be. We might have to have to have a super the super majority vote. Um, for example, if we were going to do two families. If indeed that uh, Warren article progressed and it was a review of two families, does that become? Well, that would be our choice whether we want it to be a simple EDR, majority right. or, or that, because if it's a special permit, we don't need to worry about this, right. right? But if it's site plan review, then we get to decide if it's three or four. Okay. But I think the what I understand how we're planning on using the site plan review going forward is that these are for as of right and to Shana's point, trying right. to pull back right. some of the um, the, her the barrier, which is why, <laughs> which is which was where three makes sense to me. And again, I would say the same for again if two and three family goes forward. For example, if if they decide to move forward with that, and we decide that site plan review is something that we want to talk to them about as a um, part of the process. Um, Pulling back on the requirement, maybe. 
part of what's desired. I mean, I think right. that's up for discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you have other comments? No. Nope. That's good. Any other comments or discussion? Thank you for doing this, Mr. Benson. You're welcome, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think next time we're going to preview the other change to the rules and regulations, which we had talked about a few weeks ago, right. to give the staff more Sign. discretion to approve signs. So that's drafted. And I think it's going to be on the agenda for next time. So hopefully we'll go out for public hearing on both of the changes to the rules and regs at the same time. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Cool. And so we'll make, we'll make changes to this so people have a look at it. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, anything else on? Yes, one thing we didn't discuss. Okay. Yes. The site plan review pre-application meeting required. Do we want that oh, right. required for everything, or do we <coughs> want to have it optional for very small, let's say three and four unit buildings? Or, I, so, or is it neighborhood staff. versus mass ave? Or, well, again, well, you could have a big project in the neighborhood, theoretically. If I, you I combine would, multiple parcels. If you, if you right, combine yeah. multiple parcels or you end up with a big parcel. That's why I was thinking making it mandatory on Mass Ave and Broadway, um, but um, <coughs> optional on the side streets for smaller projects. But then we're getting back into what you didn't want us to right. do. Right. You're absolutely which, right. Which is putting in mm. something related specifically to that. Claire, what's your thought? Yeah. I'm wondering if we do it for anything over four units. Mandatory. Mandatory for anything over four units. Or we could even mirror what, you know, well, no, in between communities is not is no. very different. So, I, yeah, I think mandatory for anything over four units is probably the way to go. So we'll make it optional for four or fewer units yeah. and mandatory? Okay. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> All right, let's move to um, agenda item number six, open forum. All right. See anyone oh, yeah. to join us this evening in open forum. So we will close agenda item number six and move to agenda item number seven, new business. And I will turn it over to Claire um, with regard to 882 Mass Ave. Great, thank you very much. So the board asked um, at our meeting with the developer at, uh, on the 4th, 8th, um, the, the board had asked um, the developer to provide a rendering that would show uh, updated facade of 882 Mass Ave. Um, I did find that um, rendering, I asked, actually asked the developer to send, um, and this is what was provided. Um, I think here you can see the white accents that we were concerned about painted out. Um, they did, looks like, fuzz over these, uh, the exhaust. Um, the exhausts are still there as Still of there, not just okay. looking, uh, looking as not protuberant as they were before. Yes. Um, at the, I can give you an update that the architect is looking for or uh, has identified um, an alternate product um, related to the vents uh, or, or to change the vents out, um, but I have not received any material yet um, that shows updated, you know, change to the louvers or anything like that. So driving by, it looks like they've started painting. <laughs> yes, it did, it did look that way. And uh, just stopped halfway up <laughs> some of the. It made a lot of sense because painting now is not going to work. That's too wish they hadn't even started instead of seeing well, the that's halfway, <laughs> right? That's something else, yes. Yes. I can't tell from this render they gave you, okay, no. that they uh, did what I wanted them to do. They, did, they didn't, they didn't to change, the they didn't turn the corner with the lighter material, with the lighter. Right here, right? Yeah, they didn't. These, no, I don't know what they did. No, it's still shown as, as dark. <clears throat> okay. I mean, uh, uh, so and, and can I add to that? The white, <coughs> uh, 
area below the cornice, the midpoint cornice, that looks terrible. That needs to be the, don't you, Ken, do you think that needs to be the same color as the panel? I mean, the whole point of a cornice is you're yes, denoting it looks, the yes, it looks like the top whole thing of one, through, yes. exactly. So that, that needs to change to the same, it needs to be um, the same color as what's below. I just need to go back and look at and see what we approved. Mm -hmm. Was this dark? I think this was dark. Was I think it was. And then this over here is what dark. So the so the band carry all the way across. Yep. And then right here at this edge right here, where it that turns needs the to corner, turn. that that color needs to turn because. Yep. Uh, and then <coughs> see this side here looks like they did it on this side here, but they didn't do it on this side here. I don't know. Um, if the if the architect truly did this. It would have been a, uh, a model. I just have them give me the model so I can spin it. Okay. Uh, when they give it to me like this, I can't, you know, they just gave a certain view, which I can't, you know, it's probably the best view and hides everything. So is this, what it, uh, what it looks like is a photo that they've, that they touched up, not a render. Is that what this is? This is the that photo is of the is. building that they've, Which is, they didn't use the architect. They took the photograph themselves, and then threw uh, <laughs> color in, in uh, <laughs> you know, on yeah, the like phone. You can, you can do the. Yeah. Uh, and did they submit the any samples for the vets? They have not. Are they going to? Or? Yes. Okay. And then the only thing we wanted was for them to submit the spec. Well, they painted and used on the yes. aluminum storefront. And they're aware of that as well. I, okay. um, they haven't uh, given me the spec yet for the paint, but they um, did email me and let me know that they are going to get that. It's going to be a metallic paint, right? The, the, the Carnar paint. I don't want something that says, like, you know, Benjamin Moore, white. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's not going to work. What do you it's, kind, kind of it's a It's a special finish that adheres to metal as opposed to... Um, Don't say that, because to have the architect submit the proper paint for right. that, I don't want to be the architect saying... We're going to tell them which brand to use. That's a brand that we just quoted, okay. so yes. yeah. And then we're responsible <coughs> for paint coming off. Correct. And I don't want to be the one saying that. Any other thoughts? Steve? Yeah, the, the cornice between the third and the fourth floors of white trim underneath them. Yep. I, I, I didn't notice it before, but the fact that there are six window bays and the three trim boards and it's completely asymmetric, that now that I see it, it bothers me. <laughs> That's the only thing that bothers you? Well, okay. It, it, it's that to me, that's the part that sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay. <laughs> All right, so they, they're, work, they're working on it. That's, that's good news, right? Yes. That's good, okay. And they agreed to work on it. They agreed to work on it. Okay. Can we talk about the affordable housing, which we raised last time, too? Yep. So I've gotten some emails from a concerned citizen hmm. um, who tells me that um, the, lo the smaller sized apartments have not been approved. <coughs> for um, the inventory. So can we find out what the status sure. of that is? I, I do have a bit of an update on that, and that is that um, it's my understanding that the concerned citizen did reach out to DHCD and VOHLC um, to about those units, and at the time, um, VOHLC did not have um, the regulatory agreement um, that was worked out with the town <coughs> and with the HCD at the time. Um, we just received back the regulatory agreement from right. um, the so Signed or to be signed? Si to be signed by the town, um, you know, and then su resubmitted to EOHLC um, for acceptance. So they are, I, I guess, a little behind, I think, where the town is or where the town manager is in terms of his understanding of the agreement. Um, but the papers are I'm going back and forth um, and, and to, to get signature, and I think that there's just not, you know, which you'll see, is just not yet updated um, on, on that agreement. Great. And, and 
Uh, does the agreement um, reflect the units as built or the units as um, as you know, um, does this you know there the 500 and whatever square foot mm -hmm. units in the particular location they actually exist is, um, does the re regulatory agreement contemplate what we actually have sitting in this building yes 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 <laughs> Because it, it sort of seems to me that if there are no 700 square foot units, and that was the issue, that the affordable units shouldn't be the smaller units, they should be the larger units, so they get close to the 700 square feet. I don't know which ones they've chosen in the building for those. I think they were the, they're the, the largest. Right, smallest. they're the medium. Mm -hmm. they, they he the had that identified in the documentation that he gave to us last, last, week. last week or yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. And it's they were the average size right. units, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. They're correct. Different ways to do it um, to make it comparable. My approach would, my preferred approach would be to um, spread it out different sizes um, to make it to make it um, representative, but putting it as an average is, uh, is fine. Um, okay, I won't push it then. I'll, I'll defer to the affordable housing expert on the board. <laughs> I don't know if I'm an expert professional. I'll call myself the professional. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, comments on the rendering or Not this that particular project. project? Okay, anything else under new business? The project is across the street. It makes you feel tree. Tree. I get my tree? Yes. Okay. In the spring. Yes, the tree. Probably, will probably not this spring. week. No, it's spring. <laughs> okay. But they'll, they'll put one in the spring. That's correct. A bigger one. This is we'll ask about a bigger one. Okay. I mean, last time. We'll the, the one they put in there. Yeah. No, but it was only like maybe six feet high. And it just, I don't know, it was, it was like a, a drooping maple or something. It was just something, yeah, something was something which the light up here up a little more. Okay. How this uh, Claire, any other new business? Not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. Does anyone else have any other items of new business? Nope. Nope. Fantastic. Is there a motion to adjourn? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>